presented by Mini. Oh, by the way, I got to do a, I got to do a promotion. I got to do a promotion. I saw, I went to a, a movie premiere uh, of the 30 for 30, the nature boy, Ric Flair, is coming out. And I have to tell you this right now, might be the best 30 for 30 I ever fucking saw. Um, it should be 90 minutes. It should be, it actually, it is 90 minutes. It is 90 minutes. I thought it was only 30 minutes. It was 90 minutes, sir. It wasn't, your, your dream came true. See that, everybody? So I saw the premiere of the Ric Flair Nature Boy. Dude, I don't think I've ever fucking laughed that hard. I mean, I have to go back to like a Richard Pryor special. That guy is arguably one of the funniest fucking human beings ever. And I have to tell you something. What I can commend about that guy in this Nature Boy 30 for 30 that you have to fucking see is he did not run from anything. He owned up to everything, good or fucking bad. They were sitting there talking about, like, you know, him fucking around on his wife. And he was just going, yeah. You go, how long were you faithful for in your marriage? He just goes, one day. Why do you think you couldn't be monogamous? Did you try to be monogamous and you just couldn't do it? Like, did you ever say to yourself, this is it. I am going to be married. I'm not going to cheat. No, I didn't. I probably took it real serious for about a day. Yeah, I just, there's no way. I mean, I've tried, but it just I was miserable. And he was like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I came home and I spent a day with my family and I was like bored out of my mind. I was in hell. And it was so fucking refreshing <laughs> to hear a married guy talk about how badly he wants to continue fucking as many women as he possibly could. How many women do you think you've been with? Uh, realistically, 10,000 maybe. Um, <laughs> that terrible. Right? Now I know the laughs are going to go down because there's too many women here and every guy has to sit there and act like he was, you know, like, <laughs> probably thinking about it right fucking now. I don't know. But uh, yeah, he talked about everything. Just being like, just all the women he was with. And at one point they cut back to his first wife who he calls number one. No, this guy is a fucking legend. And she just cuts back to him and she's just like, yeah, Rick wasn't a family man. He's truly a wrestler. Um, he's not a family man. Um, he loves his kids. But don't trust him. <laughs> I was doubled over laughing. And then, you know, it definitely has its sad points, but he doesn't run from it. If you can say he's a bad father or if he's maybe like an alcoholic. I, I don't want to ruin too many of the lines, but he was just saying, like, I don't know if I'm an alcoholic. I, n I never tried to quit. Do you still have a good time and socialize without drinking? I don't know. I don't know. I've never tried it. Why would I? <laughs> it was just one fucking closing bit after another with this guy. It's like, I would close with that. I would close with that. I would close with that. And he just kept going. He did tell this one story. I'm all twisted up in my 20 fucking microphones. He did tell this one story to the crowd that was there. He talked about how one night he was on the road and he was out partying and he goes, and I woke up with a couple of, I goes, I woke up next to an alien, which is what he calls being like blackout drunk and, and just waking up next to some woman you don't even know her fucking name. So he goes, I woke up and there was an alien on, alien on one side and an alien on the other. And I looked down and my Rolex was missing. So I wake the women up and I go, uh, hey, where's my, where's my watch? And they go, you don't remember? They go, you don't remember. And he goes, no. He goes, yeah, last night you threw your watch into a bowl of spaghetti and you said, I got 15 of these fucking things. <laughs> This was just a throwaway story. I mean, this is a comedy club. This is a packed house. I'm killing just remembering lines that he said. I'm telling you, you have to fucking watch this guy. Is, it's like, I'm telling you, they ought to give him like the Mark Twain Award. They're always giving it to like these, 
these fucking people, you know, I'm, you know, they give it to some people that are funny, but then other times they just, you know, sometimes that's like, that guy is not as funny as fucking Ric Flair. You got to get him in there, you know? You know, they wouldn't. No, because it's always like the, uh, you know, the, the, the arts and Meryl Streep and blah, 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 blah. Get the fuck out of here. And the Oscar goes to Meryl Streep for Stay Out of My Crapper. You know, do you think she could fucking be that good an actress after a couple of back body drops? You know? <laughs> you think she could do the flare flop and keep that, keep that period correct wig that she has on? I don't know why I'm trashing Meryl Streep. I have no idea why. You know why? Because she's always getting awards. You know? Yeah. Fuck her for doing such great work. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the dumbest shit. Jamar Ric Flair. Woo! Let me tell you, there are three things I know. Divorce, wrestling, and enduring male friendship. Woo! I'm looking forward. I ain't never looking behind me. I keep on looking forward. I'm ready.